Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have a SketchUp plan of the base of our shed. So let's just nip out here. The reason I've printed this off today is because we have sunshine. So I can set about putting down some footing pads, excuse the wind, some footing pads for the new shed which is going to go here. So I'm going to clear this mess up, mark out the dimensions, put down some pads and uh, seat some bricks on some cement for the base to go and we'll hopefully get the base in over the next day or two. Well, after it's set of course. Well, I've come into work, we've got the footings down and upon a second measurement it was, the shed was a little bit too big just a little bit too big to fit in the spot that I wanted it to so I've managed to just rejig the design a little bit so it's now an 8x10 instead of an 8x12 the one I took down was 8x10, I thought it was 8x12 for some reason so I've basically just removed one of these sections from the side that means that I'm going to have to modify the panels up there and I've also shaved 200mm off the height because the eaves was really quite tall and I don't want it to be a huge monstrosity in the garden I just want it to be a little shed that's uh, comfortable to work in and has the room to store things that I need to store but of course I don't need all the headspace I'm not going to be doing major work in there I'll come here to do that kind of thing so put me back a little bit I should have laid the base first but it was awful weather so that meant I didn't really have much choice but to start cracking on with the build uh, well that means that I've got to take two panels worth off the bottom of each one of those so I've basically got about 40 nails to pull out and just a few cuts to make which should be de dead easy realistically so I'm going to go and do that now and then the reason why I shaved a little bit off the height as well was so I can get it round the back it would have been too tall on this eaves height and I've also redesigned the back section so it can be made in two halves and transported like that so on the front as well this section can be made clad transported as a little wedge this wedge section can also be made and the doors can be panelled up individually instead of having a great big front which is 2.4 by 2.4 almost square which was far too big I think so I'm going to pull them panels back in and we'll just start to tweak them so they are more suitable for what we're looking for So this is the last panel, it's been relatively simple to change the size. It would have been a lot easier if I had screwed all of the panels on. Instead of using the nail gun, but that means I would have probably still been making them because it would have taken ages to put all those screws in. There's the nail gun as you saw in yesterday's vlog. Bump, bump, bump. Really quick. No problem at all. So, all I've had to do is knock the staples through the wood with a little screwdriver, which was relatively easy. Um, three boards off the bottom is what I've removed. And then just unscrewing the uh, bottom panel so I'm also quite thankful that I built it in that way by having the bottom panel and the top panels removable instead of putting centres in you know what I mean having a full piece on the bottom was the right way to go so uh, that made it a little bit easier for me to get the base off and then it's just a case of marking up for these just pop 
pop that over there and grab the saw. So yeah, let me spin you around. So these are the last four I've got to do. And it's as simple as that. So. Yesterday it was taking me 13 minutes to put a panel together. And it's taken me about 25 minutes to modify them all. Not each. Modify all of them in about 25, 30 minutes. And there we go. So these sides now are 1550 high. But because we've got the Dutch barn style roof on there, that does still give us the headroom that we need on the inside. So we're not going to be losing any height in terms of banging your head when you walk in. The doors are a little bit shorter. And of course I've cut down the other two I'm totally off shot here, I know. I've cut down the other um, two panels on the length as well by 600mm and that means it'll fit in front of the chicken pen because as they stood it was going to cover the door on the chicken pen so I had no choice really but to shrink it down a foot. There we go, that's that on. We'll get another panel on the bottom. One benefit as well, just how these panels interlock here, there's a 20mm overhang on the bottom which is perfect, it means I can slide that up to the edge of the ply on the base. And the rainwater isn't going to attack the end grain of the plywood, which, uh, you know, every cloud and all that. There we have it. I think I just ran out of staples then. Yeah, just popped a couple more staples in that end. She was just blowing there. Have a look that one. Beautiful. Right, so now I can continue with the build proper. Ugh. Not a massive upset. So the front and the back, as you can see, that's thrown the white balance off massively, hasn't it? As you can see, are in two separate halves. So what we're going to do is make sure that when we put these two together, we can put it all we're going to wreck it all um, uniformly and all the tongue and groove will kind of slot in to where it needs to go. I'm just trying to get this to sit straight on the table there, which is that's good. And then what I'm going to do is draw around this top apex section and then this will seat the top piece of tongue and groove. These two line up perfectly and then I can finish this and then we'll like we can cart this around the back of the building because it's in two halves and so we screw them together put the top on and that holds the top together 
and then uh, well, it means it means that we can transport a relatively large shed side through a house if needs be because I've made it segmented like this. So I'm going to do this and uh, then we'll offer it up outside in the brewery area where we're going to try and build it all up together and then we'll be able to put the roof sheets and everything else on as we need to get them all cut to size before we flat pack them and, uh, and take them up home which won't be happening tonight by the way because it's 10 to 9 in the evening but I'm enjoying myself so why not Right, I'm pulling the plug. <laughs> That's another day, another short brief vlog, but at least you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing here. So we're just getting ready there to put the uh, cladding on another siding section. Make sure I empty my pockets so I don't want to tack all my tools home. Turn my laser off like that. And we'll go and have a look at the shed as it stands. Here's one of the back sections that I've just clad. That's uh, upside down. There we go. You can see that's the back section, the other one. That's the inside of uh, the side that will face the chicken pen. That's the side that will face the chicken pen. And then this side, I've got them upside down at the minute because of the little overhang that we've got here on the uh, on the cladding but that side's up as well and what I've done is I've cut all the roof rafters I've bird mouthed some supports that stick on the side there broken screw as well you can probably just see that so those bird mouths take the rafters for the top of the roof and then this rafter here I've sat on the edge like a ring beam and that takes the uh, the back edge and also keeps the top of that wall perfectly straight. Uh, so I've just got to cut the long pieces here down a touch for the base. Uh, taking 600mm off them, that's how much we've shrank the whole thing by. And then I think this is going to get hit with paint before we take it up home. Make sure we give plenty of time for those footings that I did this morning to dry. I don't know if I picked it up on video properly but uh, I got them all down anyway before I left so yeah I'm gonna wrap it up folks this is the state of the brewery as it is and uh, still no sign of us brewing yet so I'm just gonna carry on with these little projects that keep my mental health tip-top I do enjoy having a little bit of a fumble in the workshop <laughs> anyway I'll see you on the next one, folks, and uh, ciao.